is someone who's been uh, in government, uh, in public service for both of these eras, the era that wanted more partnership with China and the one that wants to constrain it. How do you explain this immense policy shift? Well, I think that policy shift, and you're right to ask the question, it's a central question, that policy shift has been, I think, motivated by changing circumstances and changing policies here in China. And we've seen a more aggressive China uh, in this region. We've seen a China that in economic terms, through its through forced technology transfer, through intellectual property theft, not at all creating a level playing field for American companies. And I see that here. It's a very different China. So administrations have had to react to that change. And we have a much more competitive framework. And I very much agree with that competitive framework. And that's a basis of our policy. We're competing in the security realm with China in the Indo-Pacific, and that's an intense competition. We're competing technologically. If you think about uh, developments in artificial intelligence and in biotechnology and quantum mathematics, we have a range of problems on the economic front. Or, right, as I talked to you today, our Undersecretary of Commerce, Marisa Lago, is here, and she and I were addressing some of these issues with the Chinese just yesterday. And of course, we have longstanding uh, abiding commitments to defend human rights here uh, and to be critical when we have to be of what the Chinese are doing in Xinjiang, in Tibet, in Hong Kong, the lack of religious freedom. So this is a very challenging relationship. And I feel that as we practice diplomacy uh, with our Chinese counterparts here in Beijing and around this country. And I think that is, in many ways, the centerpiece of this relationship. The challenge is can we compete and yet avoid the kind of conflict that would be catastrophic for the world? That's a major responsibility that we feel in the Biden administration. And as we compete, there's one more thing I think I should say, and that is we do want to look for areas of engagement, try to cooperate with China when our interests are aligned and when it's in to the benefit of the United States. John Podesta, the president's climate change advisor is also here this week. And, you know, China's 28% of global emissions. The United States is 10%, but we are the two leading carbon emitters. And so we do want to work with the Chinese to encourage them to meet their Paris uh, commitments from the international agreement. We mentioned fentanyl. It's very much in the interest of the United States not to walk away from this relationship, but to be in the trenches pushing for progress to um, stem the flow of those precursor chemicals to the United States. Global public health is a third issue. So this is a largely competitive issue. I spend the great majority of my time on the competitive side, but we do have the engagement uh, side as well.